Hey all you Firebase developers, let's talk about two of my favorite things, Cloud Firestore and the Admin SDK. So I love that Firebase has such robust client-side SDKs for iOS, Android, and web. But did you know that Firebase also has a server-side option, the Admin SDK? The Admin SDK lets you access Firebase features server-side. So you can, for example, read and write to Cloud Firestore outside of the client. This is especially useful for offloading CPU intensive tasks and keeping secrets away from the client. Now, if you've seen Todd's videos on getting started with Cloud Firestore for iOS or Android, you'll already be familiar with the sample app I'm going to use, one that stores an inspiring quote. If you haven't seen these videos, I highly recommend you check them out. Todd gives a great overview of the Firestore structure. I'm going to use the iOS version of the Inspiring Quotes app, which looks like this. You can see the quote and author, as well as text fields to write a new quote and a new author. In this video, I'll show you how to use the admin SDK to make changes to Cloud Firestore, which can then be seen here in the client. So you may be wondering, how can I keep my quotes fresh with new inspiration every day? I could rely solely on users to write quotes, or just try to remember something interesting and type it in the console manually. After all, there's no shortage of misinterpreted quotes on the internet. Didn't George Washington say that? Anyway, one neat way I could handle this is server-side. I could use one of the many quote-generating REST APIs out there to get my quotes for me and then write them to the database using the admin SDK. I can also use server-side code to send a notification to users or something like that if I wanted to. So that's what I want to show you today how to get started using the Admin SDK to read and write data to Cloud Firestore. I'm going to show you the Firebase Admin SDK for Python, but Node.js, Java, and Go are also supported. Let's get started. First, I need service account credentials, which I can download from the console. Under the Firebase Admin SDK tab, I'll select Generate Private Key. Now, this service account JSON file contains sensitive information, including your service account's private encryption key. Remember to keep it confidential. Never add it to version control, never put it in a client app, and never store it in a public repository. Now, I'll create a new project. I'm going to use PyCharm, but you can use whatever IDE you prefer. I'll generate a new virtual environment for this project. And then I'll install the Firebase admin package. I'll do it from the PyCharm preferences, but of course, you can run pip install from the terminal if you prefer. I'm going to create a new Python file. Oh, and I'll add the service account file to my project. Again, remember not to add it to your version control. This would be a good time to add it to your git ignore. Phew, all right, finally, let's get coding. I can initialize the SDK using my downloaded service account key file like this. Note that if I were using the admin SDK on the Google Cloud Platform, I can initialize the app using the application default credentials like this. No matter how you initialize the app, I'll then initialize an instance of Cloud Firestore the same way, calling firestore.client. Now that I've initialized the admin SDK, I'm ready to get a random quote and write it to the database. But before I get coding, let's briefly examine the structure of the quotes app. At the top level, I start with a collection called sample data. This collection contains just one document called inspiration. This document will itself have two key value pairs, or we can call them fields, one called quote, and another called author. Now, as an aside, keep in mind, I'm not storing one quote per user. Everybody in the world will be altering this one document. If I were looking to save a different quote per user, I'd probably set up a users collection and create a different document for each user. And again, if you'd like to see how to build this app on iOS or Android, check out Todd's Firecast on getting started with Cloud Firestore. Now, I'm going to call a function I'm calling getQuote the result of which contains a JSON object with a random quote. The result of the function looks something like this. All right, let's generate a quote and then add it to Cloud Firestore. First off, I'm going to call the getQuote function, which returns the response from the HTTP endpoint. I'll get the quote and the author from the body of the response. I'll make a reference to the inspiration document in the sample data collection. I'll then call set on the document reference, which sets the document's data to whatever data I pass to the function. If the document does not yet exist, it will be created. 
Do keep in mind this replaces all data in the document with the data that I just passed. If I wanted to update some fields or add to the document, I'd use the update instead of set function. Once that work is complete, I'll log that the quote was written to the database. All right, let's see this code in action. The console logs tell me that the new quote was written successfully, and we can see that quote here. In the Firebase console, I can also see the new quote, but I think it's cooler to watch the quote change from the app. So here's the iOS version of the Quotes app with the current randomly generated quote. When I run my Python app again, I can see that the quote changed in the iOS app as well. See? Pretty cool. My server-side code can now generate quotes. Great. That's sure to keep users motivated. But I may also want to be able to read data from Cloud Firestore server-side. Say if I wanted to sanitize bad words from quotes or send notifications when new quotes are written. So let's look at getting data from Firestore. First, I'll start with a reference to the document holding the quote. Then I'll get data from the inspiration doc in the sample data collection using get. I'll use try so I can create an exception for when the document is not found. Then if the document exists, I can use the document data on whatever my app needs, such as sending a notification. And there you have it. Now you know how to use Cloud Firestore for Python on your server. I hope this inspires you to incorporate Cloud Firestore and the admin SDK into your Firebase projects. So be sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos from Firebase, including Firecasts like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future episode.